Okay, hello everybody. Can everyone hear me? All right, um, so my name is Nate Ani, and the title of my talk is Learning is Not a Spectator Sport. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, myself. Um, I've been an uh, open source developer for a very long time. Um, for 10 years, I was the president of uh, Jazz Carta, which is a, a Python web development firm. Um, I got started with edX in 2013, working at edX, um, and presented, some of you saw my uh, lightning talk last year on Docker. Um, I also worked with Stanford on the, um, the uh, Open edX Gap Analysis Report, with some of, which some of you may have read. Um, and these days, I'm the founder and CEO of AppSembler. And what AppSembler is, is a solutions provider. Um, we're specializing in the Open edX, uh platform. It's all we do. Um, that includes customization, implementation, hosting, support. Um, we also work very closely with, uh, with the edX team. Um, we're based here in, in uh, Boston, Cambridge. Um, and those are just a few of our customers. So on to my talk. Um, so this is how most of us were schooled, right? This is how we, when we were in high school or college, um, you know, we're in this big classroom, the professor's lecturing to a big group of passive students. And if they're lucky, the, the professor is uh, calling them out and asking them questions to keep them engaged. And you can see this guy in the back row, he's, he's uh, struggling to stay awake. So then along came MOOCs, and everyone got excited about how they'd be so much more engaging for the students. So what did we do? <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the lecture. <laughs> so we look at the same content, and we put it online, and we call it a day. Um, so sure, there's many MOOCs that you know, include activities such as questions, and you know, students um, can answer those questions and problems they can solve. Um, but you know, the, the idea of scaling the best lectures is a compelling feature of MOOCs. However, in contrast to the passive form, of learning by watching video lectures or reading text, um, the learning theorists have recommended a more active learning by doing. So we heard about this this morning, and Mitch, Re if you if you heard Mitch Resnick's talk, you know, project-based learning is really key. So many argue for learning by doing, as it focuses on the authentic activities that are more representative of the knowledge that we use in the real world. So I want to give you a concrete example. Um, one of our customers, InterSystems, they're here today uh, in the audience. Um, so they're a 30-year-old company. They've got lots of software products. Um, and they've had very successful classroom training. Um, in fact, a very high customer satisfaction rating for their classroom training. But they had a problem. Um, it doesn't really scale well, right? The class size is limited. You can only send so many students to classroom training. And it's expensive. So, you know, this is kind of what, you know, InterSystems has, has been training their customers in a traditional classroom. Um, their classrooms look a lot better than this, by the way. Um, but they're trying to make this transition to online learning. So how can they provide hands-on labs, like what you get in a classroom, but in an online environment? So some of the challenges for InterSystems in providing these online labs is that they have very technical courses. And they need to provide a way for their students to get access to the software. They don't want the students to have to get a trial license or download software. They're really trying to avoid all the complexity um, of, of setting up this software. So Jim Breen, who's not here today, um, basically came to us and said, what we would really like is for our customers to be able to put their hands on our software, you know, hands to the keyboard, and use it. And so what we came up with is a way to deliver what we call virtual labs um, to the InterSystems customers using Linux containers. Um, some of you may have heard my lightning talk standing up here last year um, at the edX conference where I talked about the promise of Docker. Well, it's paid off by enabling us to provide a very rich learning environment where students can truly learn by doing. So this is basically how it works. Um, a student needs a sandbox environment in which to complete an exercise. And they simply click a button in, in a course in edX, and then a Linux container is provisioned for them in about 10 seconds with the software pre-installed and pre-configured. Student completes the exercise, and then the container is shut down. Or if you want, you can have it remaining if they're going to come back to it to do other, other exercises. Um, so this is what it worked. This is how it looks. There's a button right in the edX course. They click that button. And then about 10 seconds later, they get 
um, these two URLs back, and in this case it's a developer course, so the student has both an environment to, to see the software running as well as a, uh, a web-based uh, IDE, or integrated development environment, so they don't have to download any software, and we're using something called Cloud9 for that. This is what Cloud9 looks like. It's a web-based uh, IDE. You can see that's the URL, so there's no software to download, and the student can actually do all the coding right in the browser. So I'm going to give a quick demo of how this works. If the demo works. Let's see. There we go. Um, so we're going to add this lab to our course. So we, we choose the lab, and we can see that that lab was actually created from a snapshotted container, ISC 1030 lab. And now we're going to take that, and we're going to add it to our edX course. So we go into edX. Uh, we choose the Container Launcher Advanced Module. And then we click Edit. And then here's where we paste in the name of the project. And if we want, we can choose a project-friendly name. Sorry, I'm kind of a slow typer. And then we hit Save. Um, and now you can see the button just changed to Launch ISC 1032 Lab. We publish that. We view the live page. And now in our edX course, we have this button that the student can click on. And they instantly get, um, well, within about 10 seconds, they get that environment. They, they can click that link, and they go right to the, uh, their personal lab environment where they can complete the course or complete the exercise. Um, so um, that's how we've done it for inner systems. And uh, has anyone seen the movie Inception? Yeah, it's, you know, I had this meta moment in the shower. You know, you, you have your, like, your, your best or craziest ideas in the shower. So I was thinking, what if we authored an edX course about developing on the open edX platform and provided an open edX development environment within an edX course? So that's what um, I'm proposing to do. Um, we're calling it right now A-Day, which is edX development environment. And it's basically a cloud-based development environment powered by Docker, which includes two things. It includes an open edX container uh, running in one container and a Cloud9 uh, IDE running in the other container. And these two containers are paired together by a shared volume, so basically the edX platform. And this allows you to, with one click, spit up a, a complete edX development environment in the cloud, no software installed, don't have to worry about Vagrant and Ansible and all this kind of stuff. Um, the benefits for this, it's dev stack without the headache. Uh, you can get started in 10 seconds. There's no software to download. Disclaimer, this is an experimental project right now. Um, so come and find me at the hackathon to get access to this environment and help us test it. So I think Ned just said I have two minutes for questions. No, I don't. Oh, you said I don't have. OK, come find me afterwards. All right, thank you.